Hey guys, it's Viejo here, and it is the beginning of the second week of January in 2024. And uh, got kind of a nice day here on the central coast of California, as always. We may get a little more rain this week, but uh, not raining now. And um, we are going to go uh, take a look at a new BB gun. Okay, I just uh, got this one recently with the other ones that you saw uh, that I've reviewed. And... Um, we're going to have a little bit of fun with that today, so let's take a look. This is how it arrived. We don't get a cardboard box. Okay, it arrived instead in this plastic blister pack, which I kind of wish we had a cardboard box, but I've got another solution for that, as we will see momentarily. Okay. Remington 1875 replica single action BB slash pellet revolver. CO2 powered, faux ivory handle, up to 450 feet per second, and dual ammo BBs and pellets. And you can see that there are some cartridges in the cylinder already. And we have six additional ones there that are included. So you can do BBs or uh, pellets out of this. And so that means it's going to have a smooth bore. Otherwise, the BBs would louse up the rifling, right? Okay, I'm going to turn it over. Let's see what the back looks like. So here we got back here. Here's the specs. You can kind of see for yourself. Yeah, smooth bore. Two sets of cartridges. Kind of typical for a couple of the other uh, revolver BB guns that you've seen, from me anyway. 12 gram CO2 cartridge. Okay, distributed by Crossman there. Made in Taiwan, all right. And we've got a nice warranty for a year. All right, let's get it out of this uh, blister pack, take a closer look. In the package then is the revolver itself, 12 cartridges. These are the six BBs. These are the six uh, pellets, and they are essentially identical. Let me show you. The pellet and BB cartridges look essentially the same except for one small detail if you look closely there on the left you can see that that one has a small icon of a of a lead pellet where the one on the right hard to hard to make it out it says 4.5 millimeter that's the bb version but i think that's the only difference you know looking down those um I'll zoom back out here a little bit. Looking down through those holes, everything else looks the same down in there. I'm thinking. There's a BB stuffed into each one of those, and they feel the same going in. So I'm thinking they're the same thing, that they're just marked for convenience sake. If any of you guys out there who have one of these knows if there's really a difference between those two uh, cartridges, let me know down in the comments. And we have the manual. And this manual isn't much. This is all there is. This is the English version. Look how tiny that print is. Man, it is hard to read that stuff. That's kind of a disappointment, but it's in about five languages. English, French, Italian, and Spanish, and German, I think. Okay. Didn't really say too much about um, <clears throat> where to place the BBs, although it's pretty obvious there's a little silicone throat in there that holds the BBs and it's the same for the pellets that both are going to fit into the rear. The nose end of those is open. There's nothing to hold your ammo in the nose. The only reference I see in here to the ammunition itself
is right here. Ensure the ammunition is flush with the bottom of the cartridge. It's the only place I see anything that tells you where to insert your um, BB or pellet. It goes in the back side of that cartridge. There's a big uh, section here on uh, dealing with the CO2 cartridge. We'll get into that here in a minute. Okay. And we got a parts diagram, bunch of safety information. I got a kick out of one part. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, right here where it says note. The cylinder is the round metal portion of the air gun with holes. <laughs> like you, I guess if you didn't know anything about a firearm at all, you wouldn't know about this BB gun either. All right, all right let's take a look around here. Okay. Eighteen seventy-five point one seven seven or four and a half millimeter BB. Okay, Remington, and somewhere over on that insert, it said it says that Remington, you know, registered trademark and all that good stuff. Okay, the other side. Okay, a couple of safety warnings there before you use. Read the manual. Yeah, if you got. A magnifying glass, you can read it. And official licensee of Remington made in Taiwan. All right. We do have a safety on the bottom. Okay. You can't operate the hammer with the safety in place. It's kind of a stiff safety. Okay, but as you can see, the cylinder does rotate. We'll check that trigger pull here in a minute. Loading gate is functional. Okay, at our half cock, let's see. Our ejector should, yep, our ejector functions. You can see it coming out of there. So that's nice. Okay, there is a base pin screw there. It's actually pokes in and out. I doubt that that's going to let me get that cylinder out of there, though. It might. We'll find out here in a minute. Okay. In the handle okay, is where our CO2 cylinder goes, and there's just like a little thumb slot there. For, get your fingernail under there and lift that up. So let's do that and get that grip side on. So with this one, we actually do get a little bit of a kind of a stubby Allen wrench there to operate the seat screw here that sets our CO2 cylinder inside, okay, and gets up there and pierces the top. So we'll be doing that here in a minute, but not right at this second. We're not ready yet. With this particular model, the cylinder actually is removable, and it's going to come out just like the original version does. So if we open the side gate, come out here to half cock, depress that pin, and pull our base pin all the way out. And this guy comes right out like that. Okay. I'm not sure why we would necessarily want to do that unless we wanted to push a, a uh, cleaning patch or something through there but so going back in okay we're going to do the reverse and I think this guy's going to want to be depressed here yep there we go all the way back until it snaps in and we're good to go so that's kind of interesting one of the main reasons I wanted this one uh, we saw Six Shooter Texan demonstrate this one a few weeks ago on one of his air gun Sundays. But when I saw that, I said, oh, I got to have that because I also have the Cimarron Uberti version of the 1875 Remington. Okay, this one happens to be in 4440 caliber. So I thought that would be interesting. Let's take a look at these two side by side. Okay, as we can see, they are very similar. 
Okay, there are some, some differences. If we take a look at the sight blades, okay, they're different. We see some differences here in front of the cylinder, so the frame structure is a little bit different. And the base pin release um, screw is on the opposite side of the, on this one. The trigger guard's slightly different. Trigger a little bit different, maybe. You know, screws in different places and whatnot. The handle or stocks are different. I mean, not just the fact that these are fake ivory, but, you know, versus wood, but it's a different shape. But, you know, very close rendition. All right, here we are on the tactical air gun scale. And we are right at two pounds, four ounces. And just for comparison's sake, my Cimarron Uberti version is at about uh, two pounds, probably 10 ounces or so. All right, let's go ahead and do a trigger pull. Just a shade over five pounds. Do it once more. Yeah, six pounds that time. Five, seven, five pounds, seven ounces. So somewhere between five and a half and six pounds, I would say. Yeah, and it's probably worthwhile comparing it to the Uberti. We'll first show clear on this guy. Okay. Firearm is clear and safe. So we'll go ahead and cock it. And let's do a quick trigger pull on this one. Three pounds six ounces about okay a couple of other minor differences you'll notice in my uh, uberti version there is a grip screw none present here you know besides the obvious difference in the shape of that handle okay um if we look down at the sight pictures I don't know if you're going to be able to see these simultaneously, but they are very similar. Okay, even though that front sight blade is different, but what we see from the rear is effectively the same thing. Everything along the side there looks to me, to be a pretty reasonable copy. I see a couple of differences in the frame. You know, we got a couple of pins there that are not present here. And I had mentioned about you know, storing this one. Um, <clears throat> one of the other reasons that I bought that is that here is this beautiful holster that our friend Mark Thomas made for me for my 1875 Remington. So what's gonna happen with this guy is that it's going to be a placeholder in that holster okay to help keep the holster shape so i'm really not too concerned about not having a box to store it in this guy's going to live here i got the belt and stuff for it too but it's going to live right there and keep the nice shape of this holster all right then we'll go ahead and get a co2 cartridge in here we'll put our drop of air gun oil there on top of the cylinder. Slide that up into place. Now they supply you as I showed you with a Allen key, but I like this longer one. Okay. And if they're reasonably snug, that's got to be tight enough. And let's double check and be sure that we have a seal in there. 
Yep, good to go. Okay, so we'll put some BBs into the cartridges and we'll go ahead and give it a try. Okay, so our cartridges are all in here at the moment. Back to half cock. You can use the ejector rod, but these guys just slide right out of it very easily. And then per our instructions, our BBs just go into the back. And these are the BB cartridges labeled with the 4.5. Okay, so these guys are just going to drop in there like such. Okay, there we go, six, six loaded. Carefully ease that hammer down and I'll go ahead and utilize the safety until I'm actually ready to shoot. Okay, here we are back at about 15 feet. We got the little shoot and see gopher there and I'm gonna aim right for the little red dot and get our safety disengaged. Boy, that front plate's hard to see. You can see we went a little high there. A little to the right. That was close. Yeah, I think that was all six. All right, here we go. Get our safety off. Again, we're at about 15 feet, guys. Same aim point, six o'clock on that little red dot. Oops, that was me. Let's go through and see how we did that time. Okay, we're still, you know, I got another one over here and I popped one down there. Yeah, not too bad a shooter. All right. Okay, there we go. I put 60 rounds through there and still very little, um, if any, felt reduction in the gas pressure, but I'm going to go ahead and stop there and pull the cylinder out. Um, but, you know, we start dialing them all in there. You know, fun, fun shooter. I got all right, guys, there you go. Uh, another edition of Viejo's version of Air Gun Sunday. I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, kind of as a side note, after I got done shooting those 60 um, BBs through there, uh, I went ahead and took the CO2 cylinder out. And there's still quite a bit of pressure in there. I'm thinking I could have gotten another 20 or 30 shots out of that. So um, <clears throat> it, it's not real... Uh, expensive as far as the co2 uh usage goes but anyway hey it, it's fun shoots good okay just like all the rest of them you know good good trigger time practice a lot of fun in the garage don't have to get out in the car and go anyplace it's right there so i hope you enjoyed that um i think that'll do it for now so from the viejo bench for now that's all she wrote <laughs>